Bear Bets podcast is back for the NFL. I'm your host, Bear Chris Flaka. Sammy P and Will will join us in the gambling group chat. And as always, Jeff is here to my left. And it's a shame there's never anything to talk about in the NFL. Yeah, just, we always have to just, make it up every yeah. week and just kind of dig and it's, figure out how we want to go. Stinks. I mean, you know, just the games in the field. I mean, like, come on. And we have officiating and then we have... The, the, they're trying to outlaw the hip drop tackle. Sound, it sounds like yeah. yesterday, like they're just making stuff tougher for for guys on defense. I mean, there's always NFL, always NFL. It, it, it was funny because there were a lot of people who were like, and, and even we were we were bringing up like all the backup quarterback matches yeah. we were in a play, and we wound up getting some some really good, entertaining games. So. I mean, is Jake Browning the best backup quarterback of all time? <laughs> he's playing so well right now. He is. He is. And Flacco's been playing great for oh, the yeah. for, for the Browns. He's been fantastic. Zach Wilson came in. Yeah, I don't. Had an unbelievable don't. game. There are Jets back. Playoff the Jets, Jets. Jets are back. Jets are going to win out and make the playoffs. They have to, we have to activate Rodgers after this week, I think, too. Yeah. That, I, I'm so mad I wasn't able to bet the no on that. No playoffs? Yeah. No, no, the no. Oh, no, the, no, the, no the Rogers, side, yes. All the yes. ridiculous people. The, yes. Oh, he's going. Oh, he, no, he's not. He was never going no. to. And we have NFL now because college football is off Saturdays. We have NFL Saturdays now. NFL Saturday is awesome. NFL I Saturday, love NFL. Saturday, I like Sunday, I like Monday. NFL Saturday more than I do NFL Monday. Well, yeah, because it's drawn during the the, the the hours you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> Monday night is on at eight 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 twenty. The, the su- Saturdays, the, but the Saturday night games eight fifteen. The only thing about Saturday that that you don't, I know you don't have you don't have kids is like Saturday. You know, it's during the day, like you. For someone who watches so much NFL, like I do, Saturday is sort of like kid day. Like we do family activities, mm-hmm. and I gotta tell my wife, like, yeah, let's be home by one o'clock. <laughs> like morning only. Let's be home to watch some. So football. That doesn't go well. At this point, I don't think. I think she just ignores me. It is what it is. Well, I, I sure as hell would. Um, you good? By the way, for those who are listening right now, Bear may or may not be in surgery. You're having surgery on your shoulder. Good luck. Yes. On that, you get to spend the entire weekend drugged up watching football yeah, and eating can't food. Wait. Like what's a dream? Like your wife bringing you food. You have medicine, like you just live in the dream. Gamble. Oh yeah, sports. I live, 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 in, live in the dream with a, a cold pack pumping through my my shoulder. And it does feel good though. But, I'm sure it feels good, yeah. but I'm not. And it's a, it's a means to the end. I've been I've been putting it off for a while. Finally, after about six seven years of the cortisone shots and the those cortisone it, shots it, are it just yeah it they don't, it's, yeah, they don't really work. Yeah it did yeah I finally said season's over. The time is now. Brand like, new shoulder. Wow. Yeah, I know. Lucky me. Yeah. It, it, it's, and as much as you fly now, you have to go in that in that scanner every single time. That's you what. Fly. Yeah, you know. You know what? That's what. <laughs> that, that's like the one thing that I've been thinking about. Now I'm like, I'm gonna have to like get the like the, the, the wand one. every yeah. time now because I'm gonna. Like, at least it saves me from taking my. Cause that, that's been the thing. I, like when they say take your belt off, that's what that's what hurts because I can't like reach behind my back to to take my belt off, and it's just a pain in the. Or put it put it on. I can pull it through and take it off, but I can't put it back on because it's just so. I'm sorry, buddy. It's well, okay, but it'll, then, be then, then, it'll, it'll be it'll be yeah. fixed. I'll be I'll be I'll be. My my goal is to actually be able to maybe swing a golf club for the first time in six or seven years. So let's go golfing. I mean, yeah, I'd love I'd love to go if, if I can golf this summer. I'll be ecstatic. So, so I spend a lot of my it, summer. It, it, I don't golf like seven working. months and then realize, and then I get back out there like in March and I'm like, oh, I'm not good at this anymore. And, and I'm no good, but I like I like the walk. It's good exercise. I like being outside. Like yeah, being outside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, being outside. All right. Well, let's hope that your wagers cash as you watch them on Sunday. So let's start with and your. Sorry. You have three NFL games this week. You have more than usual. There's a lot you like in the National Football League. Let's start with the game on Monday night, the Philadelphia Eagles. At the Seattle Seahawks, Seattle is getting four points. Eagles are 10-3 and three overall. They just lost two in a row to the Niners and the Cowboys. They are 7-4-2 and two against the spread. The Seahawks are 6-7. and seven. They lost their last four games. They're 7-5-1 and one against the spread. Bear, what do you got here? I like the Eagles in this game. I know yep. it's, it's the end of the world with how, how poorly the Eagles have played the last couple of weeks, have been able to get a stop. But there's a real good chance this is Drew Locke. And I, I think that obviously will, will help the Eagles defense. I don't think the Seahawks offensive line will be able to have as much success as the uh, the, the Cowboys and Niners did in previous weeks, uh, blocking that Eagles front. As bad as things were for the Eagles, I mean, wh- how many red zone turnovers did they have? How many points lot, yeah. did they ultimately leave on the field? Like the score was kind of it was ugly, but I don't think the, in, in watching the game it was as ugly as maybe the scoreboard indicated. 
So uh, I think this is a really good chance for the Eagles to get right. Like, usually Monday night road favorite is not something that I ever like actively seek out to bet, but, but I, I do think we, we may have gone a little too far with, with call. Look, I don't think the Eagles are the best team in the NFC, uh, but at the same time, I don't think they're absolute like yeah. sh- should be written off. I think the way they've been written off right now. So I do like the Eagles uh, minus the four against Seattle who had tip will Hill three weeks ago. I guess it was when he, uh, pointed out the Seahawks missed the playoffs at plus money. Now the Seahawks missed the playoffs. I think around minus three fifty or so. If the Eagles, it probably feels nice to not have to play the Bills, Chiefs, Niners, or Cowboys in the game. Like, it must feel nice to not have to play those teams, right? I think yeah. that's you know, look. The Eagles' defensive struggles are real, but they've also played some really good offenses mm-hmm. in the last month. Seattle's not that really good offense, no. and they've had their moments. I mean, they, they scored against the, the Cowboys, but um, without Geno there, it's just not the same offense. And so, I like the Eagles to bounce back. That's my extra day of rest for them, which I think is super important because of their schedule. Getting one more day to rest, one more day to recover, and they're a veteran team. They'll bounce back. I like the wager here for the Eagles. Also, pandering to our, to our producers, also a very smart thing to do, taking the Eagles <laughs> here as well. All right, let's go to your second game. This one's Saturday. It's the Minnesota Vikings at the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are favored by three at home. Minnesota is seven and six. They're taking on water a little bit, though. They bench Josh Jobs for Nick Mullins. The Vikings are seven, four, and two against the spread. The Bengals are seven and six. They've won two straight games with Jake Brown and looking like Joe Montana out there. They're six, six, and one against the spread. Bear, what do you got? This is, uh, I think you're going you're gonna to find the uh, the theory of zigging when when zagging with, with my plays this week. Uh, there really isn't much reason that you can point to liking the Vikings with how poor their offense uh, looked at that game against the Raiders this past weekend, but you may now make the full-time change uh, with, with, with a full week of knowing that it's going to be Nick Mullins. The defense has played really well this year. And, and, and man, this is the Bengals have won the last couple of weeks. Browning's been great, but at the same time, this is still a team that lost 16, 10 to the Steelers. Yeah. Weeks ago. So like I, I, I pumped the brakes just a little bit on the Bengals. And I think three and a half, I think, is gone. So I, for the yeah. for the column here, I had to take three. I did take the Vikings plus three. I've mentioned this many times throughout the season. I think it's it's a, it's 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 worth mentioning again with this game. The NFL is the best sport of humbling you when you're sort of mm-hmm. at the top, and you don't sort of deserve to be there quite yet. Jake Browning has played two straight really good games. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve the good right. games. He's played well. Last week was a lot of screen passes, though. It wasn't a lot of yards were on the screen passes. And they've called a great game plan, Zach Taylor, has the, the last couple of weeks. But sort of when you're at that top, it, like it goes off quickly, mm-hmm. right? And this is one of those games where like the Vikings haven't played as well, just won three nothing, and the Bengals are flying high, and it's like no one's on the Vikings in this game. Also worth mentioning, you mentioned the Vikings defense guys has played really well this year, and they played well against. A lot of times, inexperienced quarterbacks are young quarterbacks. Like Jake Brown is, is still inexperienced. Right. He's not. He's been in the NFL for a couple of years, but hasn't played a lot of football games. So, Vikings plus three, I think, is the is the way I take this game as well. And uh, the the final game for right now, before we get to our best bets later in the show, Denver Broncos at the Detroit Lions. Lions favored by four here. Denver, the road team, seven and six. They've won six of their last seven games. They're five, seven, and one against the spread. Lions are nine and four. They've lost two of their last three. Lions are eight and five against the spread. I feel like this is a trend now, Bear, of, of zigging and zagging yeah, with the Lions. It is. And the Lions, I mean, in Goff, and as we kind of talked about last week, how he was going to look uh, in Chicago in a kind of a cold weather game and uh, predictably did not look good. But I think this is a really good spot for Detroit Absolutely. Uh, to, to come back off of that performance against a Denver team that, again, I think the Broncos are getting far too much love. I mean, they've won six to seven, I think it is now beat the great Eastern stick last week. And then the chargers, I got a lot, ton of turn What were they? Plus 17, I think in their been for a long time. Yeah, they, a lot of like, thing, like teams just aren't like, they're just giving them the ball. And when Houston did not, they lost to Houston. A couple weeks yes, ago. correct. Yeah. And I, I don't see the, 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 the love is being, uh, warranted. warranted. Thank yeah. you. I, I'm, I'm struggling with words today. Who, who, who would have thought I didn't realize you were the, wordsmith there for me i appreciate you you, li- you, you know what you li- listen listening is uh the most important yes part of a part of it you're being so you <laughs> you're listening you heard me struggling you stepped in and said warranted but yeah i think it, i don't i don't think the broncos respect for the broncos is as warranted as uh, no. it might be 
I, I just I just think this is a, a, a good chance to buy low on the Lions. Win this week, you pretty much wrap up the division. It's a great opportunity for the Lions to get right. They're at home, they're inside, they didn't play well last week, and you have a Broncos team that's played better. We just talked about they're one six to seven, but you know, again, like it's kind of and they should have lost to uh to the Bills in that game. Yep. They, you know, they didn't they played Easy Stick last week. Turnovers. If they don't force turnovers, their defense is not as good. And the Lions will take care of the ball in this game. So Bear has three wagers so far. Let's recap them very quick before we get to gambling group chat. You have the Philadelphia Eagles minus four, the Vikings plus three, and the Lions minus four. All right. It's favorite time of the every every podcast. Gambling group chat. It's gonna be Will Hill, Sammy P, the Bear, and myself. We talk everything NFL. We go through almost nearly every game. NFL MVP odds, coach of the year odds. We do the whole thing about National Football League. Always a lot to talk about. Here's a gambling group chat. Gambling group chat is back. NFL, you know the the, the, the Motley crew here by now. I'm not going to say their names anymore. <laughs> if you don't know by now, you never will know. So you you, got, you guys are here. That's it. You're the texters. You're the crew. This will just start. We had, we had a great day Saturday. We got three games on Saturday. Uh, Vikings, Bengals, Steelers, Colts, and then the nightcap. Lions and Broncos. I guess we'll guess we'll, we'll just start with that first game. And and Will, I will uh, start with you, being that you are the Vikings fan. And uh, in the in the earlier part of this podcast, I mentioned to Jeff that I do like the Vikings plus three here. Uh, are you going to laugh at me, or are you, you going to say you're onto something? Means I have to watch the Vikings again. I feel like I watched them enough on Sunday to last like you know a couple of years. My goodness, my eyes are still in pain after that uh, game against the Raiders. Yeah, did we miss the hook? I I don't have the screen in front of me. I know there were three and a halfs all week. Yeah, I don't love I mean, taking I, three when I could yeah, have taken three and a half. Browning has played well, a former Viking. Uh, this might be coming to the point, like, look, anytime you get two backup quarterbacks, and we've seen way too many matchups of backup quarterbacks, don't you just kind of take the points by, by default and say, hey, like, I know Browning has played well, and it's been impressive, but are you really at the point where you're going to be laying three, three and a half with Browning? So, I guess I would take the points. I would expect the Bengals to probably win this game. And, you know, people that did those bridge jumper bets with the Bengals to miss the playoffs when they got the bro news are sweating it out because they've played well. He's got the weapons around him. I mean, he, he, look, he, he, it's hard to ask a backup to play any better, but it would be Vikings or pass. I just, I can't take the three when I could have the three and a half, but should be a close, low scoring game. Vikings can't move the ball, but the Bengals aren't good on defense. So probably going to end up sitting this one out. I would just take the points by default though. Will, I, I, I think people um, maybe have missed how good the Vikings defense has played this season. Yeah. It's been really good. And I think that if you look at, at Jake Browning, who's had two straight games that I never saw coming, I think a lot of even Bengals fans are like, holy, whoa, whoa. Jake Browning. Like, does this feel like the game where against a Vikings defense that has done, they play well against Brock Purdy, against Jordan Love, obviously last weekend. I mean, I, I, I go to the list. They played decently well against Kansas City, obviously. Um, shut down, you know, all these teams that they've shut down, obviously, the la, you know, basically the last eight weeks. It does feel like this is the Jake Browning regression game a little bit. Everyone's loving on Jake Browning. He's playing really well. Here comes a Vikings team that just won three nothing, and this is the game where you know he has his you know fifteen of thirty two for two hundred and three yards. Um, and it 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 feels like this is coming on Saturday for the for the Bengals offense. And to, to piggyback on what what uh, Will had said, Bengals are still minus four hundred to no on the playoffs. Minus 400 plus 300. So, like, they, they lose so many of those tie break scenarios where right. they're, they're still, I think, on the outside looking in. But it's at the yes at plus 300. If you did have a bridge jump, you probably be, you might be in a position where you could uh, get off of that bet if you aren't confident that the Bengals uh, will, will miss the playoff. Sammy, did you have anything in that game or no? I mean, the total at 40 tells us we're not going to get a lot of points. That's That's obvious. I mean, it's... Not a lot of uh, touchdowns to get you over that number, but how many touchdowns do you have? I am a little interested to see how Minnesota looks with Nick Mullins because it's his show now, a quarterback. Um, he was pretty efficient in the very limited action he got last week. Remember, they did bench the pastronaut. I think the pastronaut era is over in, in Minnesota. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to bet it. There is a game on this uh, on this board that I will bet. I do like a total on this board. Um, but nothing for me on Minnesota Cincinnati. I sort of agree with the room. And uh, 
Pittsburgh, I, I know, uh, I know, Will, you're still hanging on to hopes that we can get that Mike Tomlin Coach of the Year ticket home. <laughs> I'm going to dub this the, uh, the the Coach of the Year elimination game between Tomlin and uh, and Steichen here. It looks like the the Colts are uh, one and a half. It looks like consensus uh, over the Steelers. It, it, it's hard to to like the Steelers here, isn't it, Jeff? Look, Mike Tomlin is a dog. Like this is what he. This is where, this is the, 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 this is like the Can't spot where you, where you bet the Steelers, right? I mean, it, this is like the spot you bet the Steelers. As bad as it, and I'm not saying you should do it, and I don't think I can stomach I heard it. That. I heard you say but this is, this is the Steelers. Are this is the game to do it, right, guys? That they've lost two in a row in just terrible fashion. The Colts are better than I think people thought they'd be this season. And you just say, like, look, man, you just suck it up and take the points here, right? With It's a couple points. I get a one and a half, maybe two. And that's how I play the game. I, I don't think I'm going to do this in real life. But I think the advice I would give is that you take the Steelers. It was so hard to watch that game last week. Like, every time Trubisky threw a ball up, I thought it was going to get intercepted. It was it was just. He did, too. <laughs> it, it, it was just, oh, just a gross football game. To watch it. But anytime you can bet on a team that's lost two straight games to a couple of two and ten teams, I mean, I, I guess you got to do it, Will, right? How about you tease the Steelers? What are we at one and a half or two? So you tease them up to seven and a half or eight, and you tease Miami down under the field goal to minus two and a half to just beat the Jets. So um, I don't love it straight up. Jeff, Jeff makes good points. Tomlin, he's bad as a favorite. He's bad off a win, but off of a loss as a dog, that's the way to go with him. I mean, one and a half, two, you're not, it's not a true underdog where the points are probably going to come into to, consideration here but uh they don't get blown out they don't blow anybody out so i would think this would probably be a close game uh how about the the a t a steelers dolphins teaser there's other options out there maybe the cowboys up to eight uh chiefs. but to me steelers are i yeah chiefs if you can get them at eight and a half down to the two and a half steelers are a good teaser like i think sammy any, any anything on this uh second game on on saturday no, I'm just thinking about teasers now. And is Kansas City to Dallas the most obvious teaser of the week? I'm just thinking now because KC's come down to seven and a half. So they'll tease that yeah. from seven and a half to one and a half. And then everybody will tease Dallas up, it, which I don't I don't necessarily hate. I mean, I do think there's a world where, where Buffalo ragdolls Dallas, uh, especially if it's 40 degrees and windy. But um, to answer your initial question, no, I have no bet on Colts and Steelers. Uh, do you, do you want to just we'll, we'll we'll skip ahead because you you got the good tee up there on uh, on Dallas Buffalo like like look, we we talked about last week was the time to get in on Bills futures whether it was to to make the playoffs at the number that was there fifty to one was available to win the to win the Super Bowl twenty something to one was available to win the AFC and, and last week was the week to do it and we've seen those numbers uh, drop dramatically. Now everybody loves the Cowboys. Uh, Dak is the MVP favorite. He think he should he shouldn't be. Uh, the the bill the Bills coming off that win in Kansas City. Uh, we all know how that game ended. Like this is a this is a fascinating game here, and it looks like we got Buffalo two. I think is what we're pretty much yeah. looking at across the board. Yeah, two fifty and a half. I haven't seen the weather, Sammy. Is it supposed to be like thirty five forty and windy? Oh, I've got it on my tabs, buddy. Forty nine degrees. Uh, 18 mile an hour winds, 50% chance of rain, which the rain to me is not a big deal. We've, we've talked about this to me. It's the wind, yeah. but you take these dome teams outside in December and it's not ideal. I mean, how many times did I warn you guys about little oh, Jared Goff? It's so cold in Chicago. <laughs> Jared Goff sucks when it's a cold game and it's 28 degrees. I mean, we've known that for we've known that since college. But I do think there's something to be said about a, a track team, you know, a, a very good yard after catch team with CD Lamb and Brandon Cooks. And Ferguson's a very good tight end. He makes the catch, he turns up field. That stuff's difficult to do in 20 mile an hour wins. And I don't know, guys, I I'm laying two before I take two with Buffalo. That's for sure. In fact, I already laid two and I was surprised because we did see a move on Dallas yesterday uh, to knock it back down to one and a half. And then, you know, they laid one and a half back to two. I don't, I don't think it's going to get to three because if it does, people will, they'll whack three on the dog side of things. This is a really bad spot for Dallas, in my opinion. Dallas is good. Dallas is better than I thought. I wouldn't bet Dallas, though. But 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 is it a bad spot for Buffalo too, coming off the 
the, the emotional win there in Kansas City, and now you've got to come back and play uh, another. You have such a small margin of error to be able to potentially make the playoffs. You, you have to win probably three or your final four games. Like, Will, is it a bad spot for Buffalo, though, as well? I mean, I agree with Sammy 100%. I think it's a bad spot for Dallas coming off the, the game that they had last week. But uh, it's not like Buffalo has a, a ton of wiggle room here either, right? I don't think it's as bad a spot. I think it's a better spot for Buffalo because Dallas, like you said, coming off a big win, there can be the thing you worry about with a spot is complacency setting in. Hey, we got our win. We're satisfied. Buffalo has no room for complacency, no room to be satisfied. Every game is a playoff game. And if they can get this one, I think it's then Patriots, Chargers, then Miami at the end of the year, which look, they're not out of the division. So I think they're too hungry. They're too focused to, uh, to have a bad spot. So I agree with what, what Sammy said about, Hey, this is a, uh, dome team a team from texas going outdoors and look 49 degrees isn't anything crazy but uh, i just think this is a, a good matchup a good spot for buffalo by the way i suggested bill 50 to 1 to win the super bowl last year i was so convincing that i texted all three of these guys none of them tailed it none of them followed i didn't convince any of you guys so uh, i'm sitting there riding solo with them but i think it'd be good for the league to get them in the play Herbert, oh, yeah. no Burrow, no Aaron Rodgers. Like, do we need to see Trubisky in the playoffs? Do we need to see Minshew? Let's get Allen no. in the playoffs and have some no. fun. So hopefully, hopefully Buffalo does, you know, make a run and get in here. Like I said, division's really not with Miami losing that awful game. And I'm sure we'll get to Miami here. Only, division, only it's, it's possible there. Well, yeah, I it's only, they're only plus 300 to win the division. Yeah. I was texting with Murray at the Superbook, and and he said, even with Buffalo's record, and what are they, seven and six, even at seven and mm -hmm. six, they are still probably favored over every team in the AFC on a neutral. Now, I mean, there, there are layers to that conversation because they've gagged away some really questionable games. I mean, losing to the Patriots is unexplainable. Patriots have, what, three wins this year, and one of them is against Buffalo. They also lost to the Jets when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. They lost to, you know, the Bengals, I guess, wasn't a bad loss. They they've tried to lose last week. Denver, that, the Broncos game. Yeah, the Broncos game was not great. But but then when you look at their schedule, they have a three-point loss, a two-point loss, a six-point loss, a four-point loss, a five-point loss, a six-point loss. They're not getting blown out. They're just they're losing close games. And it, it it's really one of the more fascinating teams. When when Fox had us write our preseason Super Bowl picks, I put Buffalo over San Francisco. And I, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I mean, the Bills don't look like a Super Bowl team. Let's not get crazy, although Will does have a great number at 50-1. to 1. They have a really interesting path. If they can beat Dallas at home, not only do you get the Chargers and the Patriots, but you get Easton Stick and Bailey Zappi, right? It's not Justin Herbert, and it's not Mac Jones and a high-powered offense. you got a backup quarterback and a backup quarterback. But this is the season. If they lose to Dallas, they're probably out. I mean, they're they're probably out. They, they have to win this game to make the playoffs, period. I, I think if you're looking at, if you're an AFC team, a fan of an AFC team, and you saw Buffalo on your playoff schedule, that would worry you more than any other team outside of Kansas City, right? Or Baltimore, possibly. Like, that's the thing about, if they get in, they can do some damage. Here's my problem with, with Buffalo. I say this almost every week, guys. Is just, what are you getting from them each week? I mean, the end of that game was atrocious. They mismanaged the clock, right? They ran 13 seconds off the clock there, there before the two-minute warning and forced the Chiefs to use none of their timeouts. And then they got they, they got beat essentially on a, a trick play that Travis Kelsey just, just made up on his own. And obviously, you know, Tony was offside, but that really didn't change the makeup of that actual play. And they would have had to go down the field in a minute and 20 and try to kick a field goal to, to tie the game. They only scored 20 points in this game, up 14 nothing, and blew that lead. Like, I just... I agree with everything you guys have said. You, you may have all the right points, and I'm probably going to put Buffalo in my contest this week, but I don't trust them. Like, again, they continue to be 30-second in variance each and every year because they're so up and down. I mean, it took a Josh Allen making a freak show play to even go down and kick a field goal to go ahead in that game. I, I just don't trust this team ever. The look on Sean McDermott's face as that game ended, like the, the relief from him kind of worries me. It's a regular season game. Not a playoff game, and he looked like he just won the Super Bowl. He was so relieved to finally do it. I, I just don't trust this team, but I do think it's the right side for all the things you guys have mentioned. I, I think we're all kind of in agreement here. It would be it would be Bills uh, or pass, and um, it, it's interesting because it, it, that what you were talking about, Will, with the uh, 
the division still not being up and up in the air. That was one of the reasons why I liked it and talked to Jeff. Well, well, giving I'm giving away my best bet. I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm giving away the thunder at the end of the show. Okay. But I do like the Dolphins this week as my best bet. We'll go into the reasons uh, why after that. But uh, I think there's just a little. It's it, it's an it, this is an absolute must win for the Dolphins. I'll, I'll, we'll we'll, we'll yeah. leave it at that. Anybody else have any thoughts on uh, on Dolphins Jets? I'll give mine at the end of the show. You know I like the Dolphins, but any thoughts on Dolphins Jets? Is Tyreek Hill playing or not? Was, like how hurt how hurt is Tyreek Hill? Right? Is he playing? If he's I playing, I'm in. If he's not, I'm out. Finally, they finally dropped to a below Tyreek for MVP. I mean, did, what were we doing? <laughs> The fact that, that Tua had shorter odds than Tyree Kill was stupid to me. And everybody knows I have Tyree Kill. I, I don't and, and I was getting a lot of texts last week. People enjoyed the conversation. They thought we were having a good back and forth. And then pe- the, the follow-up to that was, should I bet him at 13 to 1? And I, I don't think you should. I, I mean, if you didn't get him at 50 or 80 or 100 or 125, I, I don't think you should be late to the Tyree Kill MVP party because I, I don't think he wins the award. I, I hope he does. Financially, I, I hope he does. But to think that he was priced almost double what Tua was, what, 8 to 1 last week and Tyreek was 16 to 1? One book actually raised Tyreek Kill to 13 to 1 because he's clearly the best player on that team. But I, I just, I don't know what he's got. And and clearly, guys, if, if Tyreek Kill is nowhere near 80, 90%, that team is a lot different offensively. And Man, that was bad. I mean, watching them try and move the ball when Hill was either in the tent or in the back or wherever, it was painful. Painful. Yeah, it, yeah what, what hurts, was it? Someone hurts all sent the Miami the, uh, guys for awards. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 someone someone sent that tweet during the, the text on during the game. It was the uh the uh Tua without Tyreek Hill and it was like a picture of Bryce Young. Dude, just how how bad he was. Like this is good, man. <laughs> Even, even well, we were talking about this though too. It's like he's so like unimpressive looking. Like yeah. he like looks unathletic and like the very little like zip. It's like he looked so good in college, and and now he looks nothing like. I mean, his numbers are still kind of good, but I don't know how anybody could think he's the MV, MVP. Like, but I'm, I'm I'm with you though. I I think we all kind of feel like Hill should win like if you think but the loss I think really really hurts yeah and if he's he somehow looks three more guys, valuable like, though he looks more valuable in the loss yeah. in some weird way yeah but he was yeah. he was yeah. gonna have but, to win it with with stats though he was gonna have to win it with sheer eye popping yeah. stats yep. breaking records 2,000 yards four for 61 no touchdowns in a game where you lose his 14 point favorites on Monday Night football I, I think it pretty much eliminates him I can say pretty confidently it's down to Dak or Purdy with Lamar having an outside shot because he, Lamar does play the 49ers on Christmas I think they play Miami they play Jacksonville this week so if Lamar runs the table he can get back into it and steal the award but i think it's probably dak or purdy and look i said it was 22 to 1 said it a couple weeks ago on 61 to me it's, it's still purdy purdy beat dak head to head in convincing fashion i know it's a long time ago but it still happened uh chances are 49ers like they're minus 175 to be the one seed now are you making a great bet at plus 185 not really but uh, i think this is purdy's tool to, to win here yeah I, I agree with you i don't know how Dak, other than it's the America's team, everyone yeah. love everyone. It's it's kind of like I'm trying to think of like a another like sports. Everybody like in, in the media and I'm like, everyone like wants the Cowboys to matter and be good, right? And maybe it's kind of like USC in college football. Yeah, everyone wants USC to be to be and like, I think it's because of that. But like, if you look at the statistics. And you look at the yeah. logic and common sense, like Will was just saying, like you beat them head to head, you're probably going to be the one seed. Yeah, Purdy's stats are better in terms of like a. Oh, well, his stats like I, 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 it's it's it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a discussion between Dak and yeah. Purdy. It should be a discussion between Purdy and Hill. Plus, the Cowboys have look, it, it, they have the the Bills, the Dolphins, the Lions. And the commanders to finish out. I mean, if if they win all four of those and games, we're having a different conversation. Man, I think we're having, of course, but yeah. I think we all agree they don't even win this weekend. Look, Purdy. Look, we can we can have this discussion about game manager, system guy, the the numbers, like the like the advanced stats on his season are incredible. He's having an incredible season, no matter what you want to call the type of quarterback that he is. He is leading in high powered offense. He's throwing the ball deep. He's completing a ton of passes. He's moving this offense down the field. 
And when I think about award season for the Niners, Kyle Shannon, coach of the year, we have not talked about him, I don't think, in, in that light so far on this podcast. We talked about the Dan Campbells and the Shane Steikens and Mike McDaniels. Isn't Kyle Shanahan right now, guys, yes. the, the best bet for coach of the year? I mean, they're the one seed. He is the MVP quarterback who's a, who's the last pick of the draft from a few years ago. He's winning coach of the year. I don't think he's won coach of the year yet. And it, it feels like this would be his opportunity to win. I don't know what the number is today. Nine to one. Nine, nine, to, one. nine to one yesterday. I, I feel like that's that's the guy, right? I mean, it, with four weeks left, he has to be the guy who's going to win this award. I don't know. I don't know. Dan Campbell's still favored. That's crazy. <laughs> How? Favorite. How is that possible? Like, yeah, because they, it, because they like him, I guess. I, it's just an indicator. Like these markets don't know. They they they, they, they they're just throwing up a guess. As to, as to something, but he's not going to win. And then, like, I get the D'Amico Ryan the three to one no. second choice, but like, they may not make the playoffs. Now, like, I I bet a Houston no uh, on on the playoffs the other day. Like, if they don't, if Houston doesn't make the playoffs, that they he's not winning Coach of the Year. I mean, Steichen, I guess, would have a chance. Maybe Stefanski but, might but, have but, a chance. But but I, I but, but, but Kyle, if they're fourteen and three, like. I, I agree. I, I bet him at ten to one, and I said nine to one was the last number that that I saw. And I'd still bet nine to one on because I think they will win out, and I, I think he's. I think that's definitely the best I, bet. Right I now. just I understand the Shane Steichen, D'Amico Ryan stuff, right? Like you, you know, young quarterback, backup quarterback, more with less. You, you weren't expected to be but, anything. But like, this is the last pick of the draft is Brock Purdy, and like he's putting up not historic numbers, but like very good yeah. numbers. I don't know how you can make the argument that I know Shanahan, but look, he built this team with John Lynch. Like this is his team to be the one seed to beat the Cowboys the way they did the Eagles, the way they did. And for them to finish strong, they have Baltimore, as you mentioned, uh, will, if they, if they beat the one seed in the AFC as well on Christmas day, like how, how does he not win it over? I get it. D'Amico Ryan and Shanahan have might done a quote, quote, better job with less talent, but Shanahan has done a great job with great talent. Like to me, that it feels like, this award should be his um, if they are able to finish out with the one seed. If the Texans don't get in and the Colts that don't get in, it gets wide open. Let, let's paint a scenario. The, the wild cards in the AFC are the Bills, the Browns, and let's say the Steelers. Who wins the award because LaFleur's out? All these feel-good stories kind of dried up last week. Now it's only one week, but it's late enough where it matters. Steichen you know, took a hit. Ryan's took a hit. Stefanski. So if it's Steelers, Bills, Browns, does, is Stefanski, can Tom win at 60 to one, get back in the picture? I know Bear thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> I still think, I think the best bet on the is Shannon at 10 to one. I know, I know, but I, I just think like, you're going to have to make, that's one thing we know. You're going to have to make the playoffs to get in. And pretty much every team in the league is six and seven or seven and six. So like, nobody's really out of it. Everyone's in it. it, it it's a fascinating race. Even a guy like I wouldn't bet him, but a guy I haven't heard mentioned, I was just scanning the odds and bear. You mentioned like these odds are just off with Campbell. They make no sense. Todd Bowles at 50 to one. Like if you had a $10 free bet, I mean, no. what if Tampa won the division? Nobody was expecting that team. Again, that's just, I don't know. Should, I don't think he's no. going to win, but should he be 50 to one for, for that kind of narrative? If no, none of the other feel good stories, you know, add up, I just don't think these numbers make sense all the time. That's all. The problem is you get docked if you're on a good team. I mean, when right. was the last time Andy Reed won coach of the year? 2002. Right. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. He won the AP yeah. NFL coach of the year in 2002. Andy Reed has continuously had that team number one seed, but he gets docked because he has Mahomes. And it, it, just because he has Mahomes doesn't mean he's not a tremendous coach. I mean, Andy Reid should be in the conversation. How many years should Belichick have been in the conversation right. for coach of the year? And go look at his coach of the year covered. It's almost empty. In yeah. fact, I don't even think he's won coach of the year. I don't know, top of my head. But it's they it's won it when they won undefeated. They won it another year. He's won it two or three times, but not okay. as much as this year. Okay, yeah. fine. But like he probably should have he's probably deserving of more coach of the year. Right. It's usually the formula is usually you take a non-playoff team to the playoffs or you over exceed with a young quarterback. And that's sort of the formula last year with Brian Dable, their win total was seven. They go to the playoffs. He wins the award. So it's these guys like Shanahan and McDaniel. And here's another one. John Harbaugh is one of the best coaches we've ever seen in the NFL, yeah. but he gets docked because they have a good team every year. So, I mean, I would much rather, like, it's so funny though. I mean, who would you rather have coaching your freaking football team, John Harbaugh or Dan Campbell? It's not even a conversation. It's not. <laughs> right. Right. No, you're right. Yeah. The, the, the other award out there that I guess is kind of down to two guys and, 
and, and look, I, 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 you can probably guarantee yourself some, some free money if you're looking to just kind of hold off until what the awards day is, what the day of weekend of the Super Bowl. February eighth, the they Bowl. just announced. Like so, February, February. So if you, if you if you're willing to take a little uh, two month two month CD, get like ten percent on your money, like you can bet. Micah Parsons at one book to win the defensive player of the year at like minus 125 or something like that. And you can take Miles Garrett at another one at around plus 200 to win the defensive player of the year plus 190 for something like that. It's going to be one of those two guys. Yeah. So if you're willing to have a little bit of an outlay, it's basically an R because you're going to get one of the, one of those guys to, to win the award. So if you can, if you got outs in those books to be able to figure out a way to, to do that, happy holidays to you. That's your, uh, your guaranteed Christmas money from the bear, especially you better hope it's one of those two you, guys. You, you, <laughs> well, who, well, your bets well, that's the thing. You better hope it's one of them. No, you're good. You're probably good, but <laughs> oh, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I believe me after, after, after Millwall scored twice at Lester on uh on Wednesday afternoon, it, 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 I, I need uh, all, all the resources available to, to try and recoup from that. No, nothing worse than you've got Lester who's like at the top of the championship. Millwall's like, nah. Millwall scores in like the ninth minute, I think it was. So of course I double up a little bit more, not thinking that they're going to score again. Um, and we get to the 90, 90 they, What killed me was Lester went up three one in the game, and we were up two one for a while. And as soon as they scored that third goal, then I'm like, oh, that's really not good because now they're going to kind of relax a little bit more on defense. And then of course we decide to throw seven eight minutes of stoppage time on there. Third minute of stoppage time, Millwall, Millwall scores that that second one. And uh, why isn't there Christmas at the Felica household this year? <laughs> Just Lester allowed two goals to Millwall. You mentioned the the two defensive guys. Um, this is something that we could talk about in, before next season. The the sack market for props before the season is is very wrong. Like you, you we get, like wrong markets. Like so, what TJ TJ Watts already over. Michael Parsons is right at his number right now because I bet him, so I, I know what they're at. He's at 12 and a half sacks. His number is 12 and a half. I think he'll have one more sack before the end of the season. I would think uh, so too. Miles Garrett, I believe, is over his. I didn't bet his, I don't think. But each and every year I do this. Like they put him at 12 and a half, 13 and a half, and these guys get 17 games. 16 sacks, 17, 18, 19 sacks now. They fall. I mean, Kayvon Thibodeau has, I think, 12 and a half sacks. And he's played well, but he's he's got like three of them of just the quarterback just falls into him. He just like touches him as he falls down. And these guys get sacks now at such a high rate. It's something to look at for next season. They, they, they don't price these right, in my opinion. These guys reach their numbers. And look, if you, of course, they have to stay healthy for the season. But it, to reach your over of sacks by week 14, the number is probably wrong. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, and that's the thing. Like, Daniel Hunter's got 13 and a half already. I, I hit him over, I think, 11 and a half. He's got 13 and a half. Already, I got. I got. I haven't. I haven't gone back through to, to, to take uh, inventory of all my. I had so much stuff before the year. So many of those, like season, season, season long statistical props. I just, I just, I just haven't looked. It's just one of those. Like you know what, the money shows up in the account at the end of the year. Great. If not, oh, I have a. I look. I have a Bryce Young offensive rookie of the year wager. I can yeah, cross that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cross that one off the list yeah, right now. Yeah, that's I'm not hit a no on that one there. That's not gonna. No, it's not gonna yeah, hit, guys. That's not gonna happen. No. Yeah, we mentioned uh well we not we sammy was making fun of cold weather jared goff outside cry <laughs> i don't like i don't like the cold weather i don't like the wind but he is back indoors this week and i do like them minus the four against uh it's back down to four it was saw three and a half i was texting with will on sunday i'm like like isn't this kind of t the time maybe to get back on the lines? People are going to like the Broncos, like but they're kind of like fake. They turn over luck and be Easton Stick and the Lions coming off that terrible performance. Like at home now, kind kind of feels like a good spot to bet the Lions. And we figured we'd wait, not really thinking it was going to go where. And then I saw it like so it like run to five, and now it's come back down. So at four, I'm uh, I'm back in on the Lions here. So uh. uh Will you, you or Sammy rather? You uh, you going to back your boy golf this week, or you uh, or are you a Sean Payton believer? This is a great spot for the Lions, but I just I'm just betting the game over 47, 47 and a half. I have. How about this? Since week nine, Connor Allen tweeted this out. Since week nine, the Lions defense ranks 27th in explosive pass rate, 29th in points per game allowed, 29th in pressure rate. 
and 32nd in points per red zone drive. Now, those are a lot of metrics that I think a lot of people don't really care about, and, and nor do I really for that matter. But to be 27th, 29th, 29th, and 32nd in anything in a league with 32 teams is horrendous. They can't stop Coach of the year. anything. They can't stop anything on defense. And this, I mean, I think, like I said, I think Detroit is the right side. I would lay four before I would take four, like in a contest. But, I mean, 28, 24, 31, 27, this is going to be a a high-scoring game. And the one thing about Denver is Denver's been actually very good through the air. You know, coming into the season, Russell Wilson's washed, can't throw the deep ball. Well, Sean Payton has actually gotten a lot out of their passing attack, and Detroit is like 25th in defensive EPA against the pass. So if Detroit can't stop the pass and Denver's defense can't really do that much anyways, I mean, this is a game that I just, I feel like it goes over. It's going to be popular, but I'm not betting an under with the Lions because they just, they suck right now on defense. (laughs) They they got they got a lot of help from uh from the Giants on Monday night with uh knocking the Packers off that that, that kind of takes some mm-hmm. of that divisional pressure off. But well, well, did you get did you get down on the on Detroit? Are you still waiting, hanging out, hoping this thing maybe comes back down to a three and a half a little bit more? Uh, I bet Detroit. I like Detroit for all the reasons you stated. It's interesting. You know, if we played this game a month ago, six weeks ago, this line is probably double digits. But you say, hey, it's not six weeks ago. You know, the Lions haven't played well. Denver has. I still think, like you said, it's a good buy low spot on on Detroit. And I know Denver's, they've been efficient with the passing game, but they're not asking Wilson to do a lot. There's not a lot of volume there. If you look at his passing yards each week, it's in the 100s, the low 200s. And again, that's the way to expose Detroit is in the secondary. I don't know if this is the team that really exposes them. This is going to be a Saturday night prime time. I think that'll be a, a good crowd. You'll get some help from the crowd in terms of the crowd noise with the pass rush. Lions winning this game by a touchdown doesn't seem outlandish to me. I like Detroit here minus the points. I agree with you guys on Detroit here. I think the the point that Sammy made, though, is tough with them at times because their defense just, I mean, they just have these collapses during games. They get up big against New right. Orleans and collapse down. The Bears have moved the ball well in them uh, two straight times now in a month. I mean, who's to say that they get in the, get up in this game, you know, 28-14, and the Broncos just don't have a roaring comeback, you know, to, to make it a, to make it a close game. But this this does feel like the time where you again, like this is a big part of I think wagering in the NFL is you, you find these opportunities where you have a team sort of like the Lions that aren't playing good football but are back home. You think this is a time for them to sort of ramp up, and the Broncos that have played better football, I think they won six of the last seven, right? But you know, again, like I think a lot of us feel like yeah, they're good but not great. So maybe take an opportunity to the Lions here, but their defense is atrocious, and they try to fix it now. Year after year, haven't been able to fix it. In another in another game, that... game. Sorry, Bear. Last last five games for Detroit: forty-one thirty-eight, thirty-one twenty-six, twenty-nine twenty-two. 33 28 and then the jared my hands are cold off they only scored 13 in the last game outside that was an under 28 13 but they gave up 28 to to the resurgent bears we'll see i feel like the bears i have an under seven and a half wager on the bears i feel like that's i mean they're not going to win three of their last four but are are we sure they're not going to win three or last four the browns cardinals falcons packers why couldn't they they could certainly do that. Why right? couldn't they? Certainly, yeah. They, they, win, they, they, they through, win through the last four. That 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 kind of. I thought I kind of had that one. I'm not going to lie. And I don't, I don't feel great yeah, about I, it. I now. think yeah, our, our our group bet that we made here, the under five and a half, that that unfortunately uh, isn't going to work. But but it, it. I mean, Sammy, you're familiar with like what's going on in in Chicago. Like, are they are they kind of like maybe going to have to do a little organizational reset here and think about maybe maybe we do stick with. Justin Fields now, you I mean, you're going to have the number one pick in the draft and you're going to have another very high pick. So, I mean, you are in a kind of, I don't want to say whatever you do is kind of like, it's going to work out and be a very good decision and you're, and you're going to have an excellent chance to succeed, but it, it kind of feels like they got to work pretty hard to screw this up now. Don't they? There are two schools of thought. The, the first one is that you keep fields, you get him Marvin Harrison, Jr and then you draft a left tackle of the future, whether it's all or the Penn State kid, and then you surround him with more talent. The problem is then you have to pay fields. And that's the debate. Like the other side of the coin is, well, you just take another young quarterback, restart the clock, build your defense up, which they've 
clearly gotten a lot better over the year. I think they're going to pay Jalen Johnson. I think that gets taken care of. Really, though, the Bears changed everything when they traded for Montez Sweat. I mean, go look at their pressure rate. They, I think they've won three of the last four games, and Sweat has just been a monster on that defensive line. So when you trade for Montez Sweat, you're probably not trying to then go two steps back, right? I mean, why would you trade for Montez Sweat if you're going to draft the rookie quarterback and reset everything? I, it's a weird, It's a weird time because I do think Fields could be okay on a very good team, but Fields isn't the best player on said good team. You know, he's he's an ancillary piece. He's a Joe Flacco. He's a, I don't want to say Trent Dilfer, but like he can be a decent quarterback on a team that's built with the running game and a good defense. But I don't know, guys, like, do you trade for Montez Sweat if you're going to take a rookie? That, that to me complicates what they should do. And I, I feel like the, the narrative now is keep Fields, get a receiver, a legit receiver, and then get that guy a left tackle for the next five years and then see what happens. That's I would make that the favorite, a slight favorite, over taking Caleb or Drake May or whoever. I think the Here's best the thing you can have in football, football. – no, I was going to say, the best thing you can have in football is a, a good defense and a quarterback on a rookie deal, a cheap uh, – right. basically a free quarterback and a good defense, and then you trade fields for – I don't know what you get from a two or three or four. We can have that discussion, but – I think they'll draft the quarterback. I think you go with the cheap guy. I don't think you want to pay fields. You go for the upside of Caleb Williams. You put him around a defense. You got more picks on top of it. That's a scary team in a couple of years if they don't screw it up. Sam, correct me if I'm wrong. This is Justin Fields' third year as a starting quarterback, right? His third season starting, yeah. or this is his second season starting? This third, third year. All right. The, the NFL, there's not a, a kind history to quarterbacks becoming good after really two seasons, but after three seasons of just being at best, okay, right? There's there's no history of that happening. You know, you, Alex Smith popped. He's one of them, right? Uh, Josh Allen popped after the second year, right, really in his third year, right? Like, that's it. That In modern history, that's it. So to, to expect Fields to basically become something else because you added Marvin Harrison, you added Alter or, 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 or Fashanu, like, I, there's no history of that. And then if you miss out on Caleb Williams because you play right. Justin Fields, everyone's getting fired, right? And so... I think to Will's point, we've seen now with a bunch of young quarterbacks, whether it's like even go back to, to Big Ben, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, you know, winning when you have that young quarterback, you know, Carson Wentz, even with Eagles, even though he, he didn't win that Super Bowl, besides even Tom Brady, now. that seems to sort of be the winning quarterback, right? It's like young quarterback, you build around him. Look, the, the, the sweat contract is good. It's even better when you're not paying Justin Fields, right? So I think that you have to draft Williams and you have to bring in a, a coach who can coach Williams, I, whether that is Ben Johnson, whether that's Harbaugh. I mean, someone who's going to be there for Caleb Williams. So you're, you're judging Justin Fields, in my opinion, not off of what he's doing now, but off of what Caleb Williams is. And if Caleb Williams is as good as people think he is, I think you're making a big mistake putting money into Justin Fields. Is it Williams or is it right? And, and look, he asked, you asked from... what what they should do. You asked what they should not not what they should do. What will they do? And again, we don't know what how these yeah. teams think. I, but there there is a world where they believe in Justin Fields, and that's that's the reality of the NFL. You know, GMs fall yeah. in love with guys, and, and and if they really like Justin Fields, if they can close their eyes and envision Justin Fields throwing touchdowns to Marvin Harrison, they're going to do it. Like that, that's how these, I mean, we have had so many bad decisions over the years because guys fall in love with quarterbacks. And, and that was the question, not what would you do? What will the bears do? And I, I think there's a high chance that they keep fields. I do. So would they, would they draft Harrison one or trade back and take the best wide receiver? I mean, they would trade back right out of one. They, they go to three, four, five, six, somewhere like that, and then end up, they might not get Harrison, but you can get a wide receiver with your second first-round pick, essentially, because it's, it's a wide receiver. I mean, if they get a left tackle in Roma Dunze, that's just as good as yeah. getting Marvin Harrison and with all the pick and getting seven extra picks, right, essentially? Yeah, well, they traded Don last year. They had one, and they traded the yeah. nine or ten, and they got DJ Moore in the trade. Yeah. I mean, they have, if you look at what the Bears have done, not to turn this into the, the, the Bear show with the Bear, but they have... They have tried to allocate <laughs> talent around fields. Last draft, they get a they get a right tackle and they get a receiver. If you get another tackle and another receiver, you're building for for a quarterback. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, but yeah, you you could trade out of one and and go down to three and maybe get another player or another pick. But Ryan Poles has shown us that 
He doesn't care about picking one. He could trade Ottawa, and he did it last year. So do we like them plus three this week uh, in Cleveland? Like, you, know, you talk about, uh, and we talk about, like, this AFC, like, being so wide open. Like, what could have been for the Browns this year, when, if not for all the in, I mean, losing Delpit and, and losing Okorano now, they're, they're like, it, it's, a, and it's amazing. Both and, and they're out now, by the way. And both tag and, Jamal like, Jones has got they're out still team. eight and five, right, and got a really good chance of making the, making the play. They probably will make the playoffs, but, like, the job that Stefanski has done is kind of piece and piecemeal on this together to get them in this position. Their offenses look better than at any point since they had Deshaun Watson on their roster with Flacco the last couple of weeks throwing the ball now. Like it, it's just a a tough deal for the Browns because like you've beaten the 49ers this year, but now you're even more beat up than you already were. Like it, it just it just feels like another tough deal for the Browns because if they're at full strength, like they they would have, I think, a real real legit chance. But I don't know if I want to lay three here, Jeff. Do you? I don't know. The, th- the thing about the the Bears though is, you, see, I mentioned their defense. They haven't played some great offenses in the last month, and the Browns aren't a great offense per se. But Flacco's playing really well, and this kind of shows you that you know a veteran in this offense, this guy's open. He's got to find the guy that's open, and I just don't know if. This is a spot where you also look at the Bears off of, is it two straight wins now, I think? Um, you know, are they are they riding too high? Is it time to sort of fade the Bears in the spot? I, I really don't have a play in this game, I don't think, for, for those sort of reasons. But what the Browns are doing is great. I mean, Flacco is throwing to the open guy. He looks rejuvenated. But now they're down their right tackle now, so Montez Sweat's playing a backup. Again, I mean, that favors the Browns in, 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 in that spot. I don't know, man. I, I think this is a no play for me. Will, any, anything here? There's some three and a halfs out there. I would take the three and a half. And Jeff, if look, I got under seven and a half wins for the Bears too, a little hedge, a little, you know, middle where Browns win the game by three and then you <laughs> yeah. feel much better about your under seven and a half. I just, look, Flacco's a really good story. And man, this guy was on his couch a couple weeks ago. Now he's going to be maybe starting a playoff game here in, in a month or so. But are we at the point where we're going to lay three, uh, three, three and a half in, in a game that should be close, low scoring? I mean, I could easily see this but with these two defenses not being like a 20 to 17 type of game. So there are some three and a halfs out there. Bears plus three and a half would be a play. Need the hook though. The, 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 the immortal Bay of Pigs game is I'm dating myself with Chris Berman here. And the, the, the NFL countdown days, Tampa Bay, Green Bay Packers uh, losing that game on, on Monday night to, at, the, at the Giants and Tommy Cutlets, uh, the first place Tampa Bay Buccaneers and uh, the Packers uh, threes. They're both they're threes and three. And it look, looks like I might be headed, uh, headed uh, in the direction of three. Uh, three and three and three. So I don't know. I, I I don't think Tampa Bay is any good. I really don't. It kind of feels like a rebound spot here. This would be kind of be. I, I'd find a three and lay the three with Green Bay here. Wouldn't you, Sammy? This is the the zigzag. If you've been zigzagging correctly with the Packers, you've done a pretty decent job. Going into Kansas City, nobody wanted to bet the Packers. Packers mm-hmm. knock off the Chiefs. Then everybody bets the Packers against the Giants, and the Packers lose to the Giants, right? So, like, there are there are people somewhere that are just like, oh, I can't figure this team out. Um, if you're going to continue the zigzag, you buy low on the Packers. I like the under in the game, guys. I mean, the, the I watched, I got the the setup in the back. I had Bucks Falcons on TV one last week. Oh, gosh, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bad football. Better decisions game. have been made. Horrible. horrible and, and, and remember, I've watched a lot of Iowa on TV one this year, too. And so for me to complain <laughs> about anything <laughs> offensive related is my own fault. The Atlanta Falcons are are maddening, which is a different conversation. But Tampa Bay, like Tampa Bay sucked too in that game. And Mayfield makes the great throw at the end to win the game. But that wasn't a game where Tampa won it. It was more like Atlanta lost it. Really, and those teams are both still yeah. under 500. So, I I wouldn't pick this game either way. I lean to the Packers, but I like the under in the game, like 41 and a half, 42. Jeff, I got nothing on this game, and I try to avoid all NFC South games at all costs because, like, I they're just the same. You said it. It's just not a fun watch. Every time they put the Red Zone channel on with this game last week, I was like, oh, 
yikes. Like, can we put some other game on? It's just, they're not fun teams to watch. Look, the Packers, youngest offense in the NFL. Obviously, have been discussed many times. It made sense last week, and I know this is one of your wagers you had in the show last week, for the Giants to, to cover that game. Now, winning that game, I didn't expect that to happen. But look, it was bound to, to have a bad game with an offense at average, you know, average age of 25. I'd imagine this week it's better. It's back to being better. This is the, the normal path for a young offense, but I just try to avoid wagering on NFC South games. Speaking, speaking of unfun things to do, watching the New England Patriots play football, and this game actually has been, I think, what flexed out of the Sunday night game, yes, the Chiefs-Patriots. Uh, the Chiefs down to 7.5, and, and the total, you can still get 37.5 as a total. I, isn't this the, doesn't this feel like the rare favorite and under? Like, how the hell are the Patriots scoring points against? Like, I, I think the, the Chiefs coming off of the way the way that game ended. I, I think like uh, people were kind of a I don't want to say attacking Mahomes or a Q. Or what? In my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. You've been you like I think Patrick Mahomes was just kind of protecting his guy tony and kind of deflecting the attention and the blame from the fact that he lined up off sides cost him team the cost the team the game with the penalty he's like i'm 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 the quarterback i can take the heat i, I they, they yell at me fine i'll be the one to have the outburst a terrible call don't we need Darius tony to be well to, to play in order to have a chance to get back to the super bowl and win so you know what Yell at me! I'm the idiot! I'm the bad guy by attacking the officials. Like, I think the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs come out this week and win very, very easily. I think Mahomes and Andy Reid are angry about the situation they're in with their team right now, and they use the officials as the medium to yell and be angry. I don't think they thought about it in the moment, like, "Oh, we got to protect Kadarius Tony." I mean, I think I think Monday for sure, and you know, they had a chance to to come. I think on Sunday, they were just angry. Because they haven't been in this spot in five years, right? right? They have not been in this spot where they just can't score points. Um, and there's, when you watch Chiefs play too, I mean, there's times when guys are open and don't know, don't understand where Pat's going to throw the ball and there's miscommunication. I mean, it's just, it's not good football and offense. And I keep saying every week, oh, this is the week they're going to bounce out of it. And I don't do. know if it's this week. I mean, the Patriots defense is good. Yep. Their offense stinks. They're not going to score any points in this game. But defensively, and Sammy follows them too. Like he knows, like they're good on defense. That's not a problem this year. And I just don't think the Chiefs all of a sudden are going to like have this bounce. We keep saying this is the week of bounce back game. It's bounce back game. Like, I think this is what the Chiefs offense is. There's no bounce back game coming. It, it, it's just going to be disjointed. You hope you get in the playoffs and you, you get hot for two or three weeks and you make the Super Bowl again. So I I think the under 37. This game's going to be 20 to seven. I mean, no one's going to score in this game. Pacheco back this week or no? Clyde Edwards Hilaire played great last week. Like that wasn't their problem. They ran the ball fine. I agree. I think Jeff said about the Chiefs. Mahomes total at 37. It's crazy. I mean, when have we ever when have we ever said that with Mahomes? Uh, this is, I mean, his totals are 45, 49, 50, maybe. So this number to me will speaks volumes. Um, the sharp money, too, just gobbled up uh, the Pats. They took 10, 9, 8. It's down to seven and a half in Vegas. I, I mean, I, I'm sure maybe the I don't see it. the resistance comes at some point. Maybe the if it gets to seven, obviously somebody's going to lay back seven. That's that's understood. But I wonder, seven and a half might be the floor where it starts getting laid back to eight, eight and a half. But it's 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 hard will to ignore two things: the low total with Mahomes at 37, and people are going to go, "Wow, that's a low total with Mahomes." But really, it, it's low for a reason. And two. The Sharps just pounded the Patriots from 10 down to seven and a half. Look, you can tease Mahomes now basically where he just, he just, Patrick Mahomes needs to beat Bailey Zappi. You tease it from seven and a half down to one and a half. And hey, if you beat me, you take my money and take my money. Um, also, like I agree with everything Jeff said about the Chiefs and it's not the same team that they really done a disservice to him with the receivers or lack of receivers they put around him. But the rest of the schedule is pretty easy. Plus 300 to be the one seed. Let me just make the case. The Patriots, the Raiders, the Chargers, and the home against the Bengals are the last four games. If you look at these other teams they're competing against, the Dolphins play the Ravens, the Bills, the Cowboys. Uh, the Ravens also have a tough schedule, 49ers, Dolphins, uh, at Jaguars. Chiefs have a decent tiebreaker scenario. They beat the Dolphins head-to-head. -head. They have a good conference record. That comes down to that with Baltimore. Chiefs plus 300 to make the one seed. It's not crazy that, you know, look, if Tony's three inches back last night or last week, we're, we're having a totally different conversation. Hey, they found a way to win. Mahomes mm -hmm. always finds a way. So I don't know. Plus 300 to, to be the one seed is not a bad bet for the Chiefs here. 
and one of the teams that they'd be in competition for to be the one seed, the team, the game that did get flexed to Sunday night, Baltimore uh, Ravens are a three point favorite at Jacksonville. You talk about, you don't like betting on the, the NFC South, like Jacksonville oh. games involving the Jaguars are usually the games that I don't like being involved in at all. I, I have a much lower opinion of Jacksonville than I think a lot of people do. Um, however, I don't know if I want to lay, I, I don't, it's so weird. Like I know the Ravens record is good, but it's like, I don't get the sense like they are as good as their record. And like, I don't see them as like a Super Bowl winning type of team, like, like a threat. Like, is it weird? Like, it is like weird to say, like, is Baltimore like the biggest threat in the AFC? Like, if you were to pick one team in the AFC to win the Super Bowl, like, would it be Baltimore? I mean, would it be Kansas City? Would it be Buffalo? Like, I don't know if I want to lay three here with the uh, with the Ravens uh, in, in this game, especially with Jacksonville. Uh, they, they Lawrence looked okay last week. They nearly came back and had a chance to win that to win that game with the weird decision by. Uh, Peterson to try and go for the I two love point I, You loved it. My, I had Browns minus three, so it was great. <laughs> it was a good, good, good decision. Analytics score for me. Score for me. I, I don't. I don't know. But, but Sammy, you got any thoughts on Baltimore or Jacksonville here? I, I, it's a no play for me. I guess if I had to play the game, I'd take Jacksonville. But I, I'm just not something about Baltimore. Where I'm not fully there. And I feel like this number at three is just is perfect. It's a perfect line. You know, that's the reality. You know, we people watch these shows and they they want bets on every game and picks and props and all that. And I have no issue saying I'm not betting this game. I, I think Baltimore, look, the look ahead was five, five and a half. That was too high, clearly. And now at three, I just, I feel like it's, I can easily move on with my life without a bet in this game. And not a lot of people <laughs> want to tell you that. Seriously. I mean, how many shows or how many clips on social do we see where we go, oh, yeah, the, the, the Ravens are a lock? No, they're not. The Ravens are a three-point favorite on the road on Sunday night. Like, it is what it is. Correct. And I, I maybe I can maybe I can put it in a contest, but I, even, even then, like, I just, I don't have an edge, and I have no issue saying that. I have good news, Sammy, because you said three is the perfect number. There's a plus three and a half at FanDuel, minus 120 for the Jags. I like the three and a hook. I'm not a fan of this Jags team. I agree with everything Bear said, but uh, I think this will be a close game. I could easily see this being, you know, 20 all with two minutes to go. And, you know, the Ravens have the ball and Tucker wins it at the buzzer or something like that. Jacksonville beat them in a close game last year. Um, th th I think this is a good spot for the Jags off of a couple losses. Lawrence looks healthy, but Bear talked around it. If the Ravens are the best team in the AFC and we can't really figure out who the best team in the AFC is and we know the 49ers are the best team in the NFC, if you shop around, if you have enough outs, there's these look-ahead lines for the Super Bowl where you can just put NFC versus AFC on like a money line. I see some NFC minus 110, NFC minus 115. Now, again, you got to get to the 49ers to the game, but don't you, if you get the 49ers to the game, aren't they a three and a half, four point favorite against pretty much anybody? And then you have a nice little hedge yes, middle opportunity. Yeah. So to me, the, four, the the NFC to win the Super Bowl, if you shop around and look for those, to me, that's a good, uh, a good bet right there. Yeah, I would do, I would say I, probably I San Francisco's three on Kansas City and Buffalo. Three. Yeah. Even if you get Dallas, that's yeah, not so terrible. Get... I feel like the NFC is going to be favored either way. Yeah, I would agree. And then, you, and you, then you're grabbing what plus 125 or so back the other way. I'll take that, take that come game. That you mentioned the 40, 49ers. It's, it's circa. I'm, I'm looking at the, the the odds right now. Looks like they they're mostly 12, 12 and a half out there. Circa looks like it's posting 11 and a half on the 49ers here against Arizona. That feels. I, I know it's at Arizona. It's kind of a a dead spot for the for the Niners, but I don't know. I'll, Shouldn't they just blow Arizona? I know Arizona's beaten Dallas there early early in the year when Dallas had all the injuries, but shouldn't the 49ers just be able to name their name their score? I know Arizona's coming off of the the bye. I know the Niners had the the, the game against Seattle and the and the the week before against the Eagles, and maybe this is the complete just ho hum look, look ahead game, just kind of stale sandwich game. But eleven and a half, I feel like I might lay with San Francisco, Jeff. I, 
to Sammy's point about earlier not having an opinion on a game, I don't know if I have an opinion on this game. I mean, I, I think that's a, that a perfectly I would fine normally answer. take the divisional dog getting 12 points in any matchup. Uh, that's what I would lean toward. But I mean, if the Niners play their A game, yeah, they'll win this game 34 13. If they play like NFL teams do at times and they don't play their best game because they've played a bunch of tough opponents in a row and it's Arizona, I think they can easily beat them. Then maybe this game ends up being 27 20. I, I, I don't really know which way this game goes. I just would stay away. Potentially, talk, it's funny, we're talking about hypothetical lines between the Ravens and the 49ers. We potentially. We'll get that look ahead line next week when they play on Christmas night. And that might be another reason why it's been a little, it looks like circus been maybe a little lukewarm on the Niners this week is just because of that game uh, in San Francisco, in, in Palo Alto, San Jose, wherever we're calling that stadium is this case as the Niners host the Ravens. Either you two uh, guys, Sammy or Will, have a thought on uh, Niners uh, Cardinals? A lot of points. Murray has played well against the 49ers from what I remember, uh, forever that's worth. He, and he's played pretty well since he came back. I, Sammy's been on top of this. We've all said this, you know, with our Cardinal season under wins, but I don't know what their plan is here to just win themselves out of the top two, one or two picks in the draft to get to like four wins. Congratulations. You're going to win four games, but this is a lot. Of, if I had to make a bet on this game, I, I wouldn't be the side. It would be San Francisco uh, 49ers team total over 30 and a half. When you have a bad run defense like the Cardinals do, the last team you want to see come marching in your building is the 49ers, who basically are just gonna, you know, run it for six, seven yards a clip and do play action. And, you know, they'll probably get their 31, 34 plus points. So 49ers team total over probably the best way to attack it. I probably will put the Cardinals in my five, and I hate it, but it's it's a big number. <laughs> um, my one mm. contest line is 12 and a half. I mean, we just saw it, you know, Tennessee as a 14 point dog went out, right. You know, it's just, I know that, you know, we're not doing the transitive property here, but that that's a big number. And, and San Francisco, here's the other thing. San Francisco just needs to stay healthy at this point in the season. I, I don't think you're going to see a lot of McCaffrey Debo Kittle. Let's say it's say it's 21 to six in the fourth quarter. I mean, are those guys playing 110%? I, I don't, no. I wouldn't play it because you need them for, you don't need them to beat Arizona. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to blow Arizona out. Everybody knows Arizona sucks. That's not exactly the greatest handicap in the world, but I, I will take the points there. And you brought up uh, the look ahead on uh, San Francisco and Baltimore. Uh, that that number's out. You can bet it now. It's five and a half. Wow. So doing the no you know, standard point, yeah, 1.8 points for home field, or if you want to knock it down to one and a half, that, that tells you that on a neutral – San Francisco is four points better than Buffalo or uh, than Baltimore rather. And it's probably a similar number for, for KC and Buffalo. So that's, that's where we're at to Will's point about the, the Super Bowl number, you know, NFC minus minus one ten. If it's San Francisco, San Francisco will be a three point favorite over any AFC team or better three or better. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of, I felt like I'd kind of really enjoy laying four, four and a half with the, Niners against the Ravens, if that were the Super Bowl. A any other games out there that we, we we hit on most games? Is there anything else out there, Will, that we um, we we didn't touch on that that you like? I can't lay six with the Saints, but doesn't it feel like the DeVito story? Doesn't it feel like his 15 minutes of fame come to an end <laughs> at some point on the road in a dome again? I hate the Saints team. I can't stand Carr now, especially his favorites, but don't you feel like that comes to an end soon? Again, it's not a game I bet, but I feel like that's coming at some point. Sammy? I'd go to the DeVito tailgate. I mean, who are we kidding? Did you see that oh, spread? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can we get Bear Bats to go on the road when they have a, a Giants Let's game next? Can you imagine can you imagine Jeff at the tailgate? Oh, it'd be my dream. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I mean, it's just down the street. We can see it from we can see it from the, the top of the, the building here. We, we, it's not very far to get to MetLife from here. Let's make it happen. Speaking of happening. Big, big news uh, elsewhere in the sports world this week. We, we finally have a new uh, home for Shohei Otani. Uh, just to get a little baseball in here, just kind of get a, a wagering reaction uh, to this. I mean, I think like, it's premature just to kind of adopt the, the, the Dodgers as like a clear World Series like favorite champion here. Like, I guess you got to look at it two ways. 
if all they're doing is adding Otani as a DH, like, are they really better than the Phillies or the Braves in the, uh, in the NL right now? I don't think they are. Now, of course, Freeman, Betts, and Otani is a one hell of a, <laughs> a core of your lineup, and they'll certainly score runs. But they're, what are they going to get out of the rotation? I mean, you're going to have Bobby Miller. You don't know what you're getting out of Bueller coming off of arm surgery. You don't know what you're going to be getting out of Khrushchev when he, Urias is gone. Like You're relying on Bobby Miller, Pepio, some other guys. The bullpen was, I think. Now, if you're going to add Josh Hader, if you're maybe going to add Cor- Corbin Burns, or maybe you're going to add Yamamoto, I guess that's the... That's the that's the bet here. Like, if you think they're going to add some pitching, then the number that you're going to get on the Dodgers right now is a good number. But if you but if you just think like this is all they're going to do, then it's probably not worth playing. So I, I I'm not rushing to rushing to go out and bet the Dodgers because it's a 162 game baseball season. We saw what happened. I mean, this year is a perfect example of like yep. baseball playoffs being so totally random. Like I'm not, I'm not there with just saying like the Otani deal makes the Dodgers uh, a lock to win the world series. Well, yep. You alluded to it. Rangers diamondbacks before the postseason, So we knew both these teams were in, but I think it was like you know, 400 to one or something ridiculous for those two teams to play. So you have to go through so many rounds. Now there's so much randomness. The layoff tends to hurt these teams. Again, it's a small sample size, but with that pitching, with the randomness of baseball, I, I don't think the Dodgers are a good bet. And, they don't just need one good pitcher. They probably need two. Maybe you can get Burns. Maybe there's talk of getting glass now. And again, it's teams aren't going to just say, hey, you're the Dodgers. Just take my best pitcher. So it's, it's hard to find really good pitching. I think Kershaw's shot, like you said, or Urias isn't coming back. Um, so this is a great fantasy baseball team. I just don't know that they're like the rightful, clear favorite in terms of uh, winning a championship because it's just not how baseball works. It's a beer league softball team right now. I mean, they're just going to hit a good one, but 100 wins. <laughs> They, I mean, they're going to win. They're going to win close to 100 games. I mean, the win total is going to be, I'm going to guess it's going to be high 90s now. Um, but Gonsolin had Tommy John. Dustin May had flexor tendon surgery. Those guys aren't back anytime soon. You're, uh, you're one through four right now in the rotation is Walker, Bueller, Bobby Miller, Ryan Pepio, and Ryan Yarbrough. That's where you're at. But you're going to hit the snot out of the baseball. That's Otani, Freeman, Smith, Muncie, Altman, Taylor. Hayward hitting eighth, Lux hitting ninth. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna just softball teams to death. I'm serious. Um, and last year, I wrote this for Fox. If you're looking for more Otani stuff, just go to foxsports.com, uh, click on odds. They were favored 142 times last year in 165 <laughs> games, which is wild because you get the three playoff games, they <laughs> lost all three. But um, I, I did bet Otani over 39 and a half homers because he's gonna be all offense all the time. I mean, he's not pitching this year. Cause he's got the elbow, yeah. but 39 and a half homers. I know that's not a hitter's park per se, but he's not hitting wall scrapers. He's hitting balls to the moon. No. How many games of course does he get now? Exactly. So, eight, yeah. eight or nine or so. We're, so people are excited to wager on a team that's won one championship since 1988. Like the Dodgers don't win championships. Sounds like the, that sounds like the Cowboys. They they don't win championships. And the year they won was in the bubble. But they even play they played a third of a season in a bubble. Like they, I don't know. I just think that if you think this is going to make the Dodgers all of a sudden win a championship, I don't know. History shows it doesn't. So good luck with that with that wager. I also hate the Dodgers, by the way. I, no, I know you you are yeah. no, noted Giants fan. Yeah, I'll make that very clear. Yeah, Washington Huskies and L.A. Dodgers. <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll uh, Barry, you're going to be in a lot from, of trouble, uh, by the way. You you didn't bring up the Eagles yet. Chelsea's going to be very upset. You know the Eagles play this week, too, at the NFL. I I, I, I am who, aware. Who are the Eagles? A team that, team I, that lost the last two games to the two best teams in the NFC. They, it, She's not going to be happy, Bear. In Philly or not? Any it's, defense in Philly being played? They, they got a good. They got a good defensive line. Is what I was. What I hear. But I hear if you can block them, you can you can kind of move the ball on them and, and through the through the air. That they're a little a little suspect in the uh, in in the back end there. So uh, maybe. So so the Eagles like play on Monday speed. night against Seattle. I'll take this over since we're not. I mean, clearly we're not going to talk about Monday night football here. Uh, Bear, no, we, we're, we're here. We're here to. We're here to. Seattle? We're here to make fun of Chelsea and her team being not very good right now. Bear, Bear likes the Eagles, though. I do like the Eagles with you, Sammy. Continue. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Will, any thoughts? I mean, Seattle's not any good, right? 
Wow. I don't think I'm laying three and a half. Here, here's a lesson in, in this game. Like these awards markets, we talked about it earlier. These awards markets can be so far off because it was like 10 minutes ago that Jalen Hurts was like plus 125, plus 150 to MVP. Wow. I think we all thought it was ridiculous at the time. Now it's, I mean, he's eight to one. He might as well be 80 to one. I don't think there's a path for him. So those these markets are not always as efficient as we might think. Did you have a play in the game, Sammy? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, you're, 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 you're allowed to say no. I I will say this though. The for all this talk about Dak MVP and Cowboys this and Cowboys that, the Eagles are still three dollar favorites to win the NFC East. Look at look at the odds. I mean they're two seventy to, to three hundred to win the NFC East. Dak Prescott, I I, I find it hard to believe he's going to win the MVP if the Cowboys are a five seed. So. How is Dak the MVP favorite when they're not even favored to win the division and it's not even close? To me, that math doesn't add up. So take from that what you must. I agree. And as bad as we like to make fun of the Eagles, it's Sunday they did kill themselves with red zone turnovers. So as I, I do, I, I think they'll bounce back this week and go against a much weaker defense in Seattle. Well, on that note, guys, we're going to end it. I'm sure Chelsea is very happy right now. We like the Eagles to win. Sammy says it's still the favorite to win the NFC East. Appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll uh, we'll talk again next week. Always fun, always entertaining. Didn't really get into survivor thoughts there because I knew we were going to get into it yeah. here. But um, crazy week last week with all those underdogs winning out right. I know the, the Circus Survivor Contest down from 21 now to 13 people. I know I personally know one of the people. Okay. Still alive. I have not spoken with him yet uh, this week about Survivor. I knew uh, he actually had the Ravens last week. Oh. So he was extremely lucky. Yes. Or else, or else we could have been down to even fewer than that. Yes. Um, but yeah, we, we talked about how, like, the Packers, like, I couldn't get behind them last week. And, 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 and unfortunately, that bit yeah. uh, quite a few people. <sighs> I would have met, like, look, New Orleans. We, we know who, we know, who, but, do you really want to play New Orleans? But I mean, if you don't have a lot of teams left, I mean, I'm, is... I'm thinking most team people will probably have the Rams. That's what I'm thinking. Rams against Washington. No. But do you want the Commanders can move the ball at least? No, that's the thing. Their defense is terrible. It's probably you know, and I mean, it's is it the highest total game of the week? Yeah, it is. I mean, as as, as it should be, yeah, fifty. Yeah, right, oh, right yeah. there with that, right yeah. there, right there with Dallas Buffalo, like. If you have right. Miami, it would be a good time to use Miami, I feel if like. If you still have Miami. Yeah. I mean, do you, Falcons on the road at Carolina? That's That would be one that I would consider. Usually, I hate road teams. I'm gonna, I might play the Falcons but, in my contest this week. Yikes. But, like, the one thing I would say about the Panthers is. They like, suck? <laughs> yes, they do suck. Okay. They, they, didn't they outgain the Saints last week? Oh, game? no. I turned, on, I turned on to watch NFC South. Games. We <laughs> yeah, yes, we went over that in the game. Yes, <laughs> we, 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 we've gone over this before. But then, like, that was the best, like, game Atlanta's yeah. had, like, in terms of moving the ball last week, and they still couldn't win. Like, God, I would hate to. Could you imagine having, like, potentially $9 million on the line on the Atlanta Falcons? No. So I don't play, <laughs> I don't play Survivor for a $1,000 No, injury. the answer is no. No. Well, good luck to Survivor folks. They're still alive. yeah. It, it, it's a it's a brutal. I'm sure they're listening to us about what advice to take. It's, it's a it's, it's a yeah. Years. I was gonna say me who had knocked out early in the year when the Cowboys lost to the the Cardinals. Yeah, that was that worked out well. I'm, you know, you know who people are gonna go with as well, and it's Oppo. One my Bengals are gonna be a pick this week. I think. Yeah. So I think people will. I think. People will kind of come to a conclusion, maybe that the vibe. But the thing is, and this is the this is the interesting thing about Survivor, is normally I would say, oh, a lot of people will. Number one, there's only 13, 13 people left, yeah. and number two, I was going to say, you would think these thirteen people have a pretty good game theory type background, right. and they're not just making a knee jerk reaction on what we saw the previous week. But at the same time, there probably are a couple of people in there who have just maybe been kind of lucky and yeah. and maybe they've made a couple of rash plays like that. And maybe there will be one or two people that automatically, ah, the Vikings stink. They got 
barely fortunate to beat the Raiders at third three, whatever the quarterback now. Bengals are playing well. They're home. And, yeah. and they'll go and they'll go with with them. <sighs> if you asked me to pick the Bengals between if I had to take either the Bengals or the Falcons, I'd take the Falcons. I'd say the Saints. <clears throat> it's so funny. Like they were there. I know, I know someone who like there are these survivor websites yeah. where you can like purchase other people's survivor yeah. entries. Like I had a <clears throat> a friend who nearly he I talked him out of it. He he wanted to put in a bid on an entry, and like one of his like his main strategy was going to be I'm just going to fade the Patriots and the Giants like with and yeah. he would have been out by now because yeah, the that. way he would he, it was the Patriots yeah. beat the Steelers or the Giants yeah. beat we won a couple of games now like. I'd have a hard time playing the Saints here just because I don't trust Derek Carr is terrible. Like they have injuries. Like I don't I don't think the Saints are good at all. Like at least the Giants are playing hard and they deserve to win that game Monday night. Like I I couldn't get there with the Saints. I I Person. I would I would play the Rams here just because okay. I think the Rams can still make the playoffs and if they have to have this game to make the playoffs. So of the potential teams that I think people have available, I would go Rams one, Falcons two. Okay. There's Bears survivor picks for the week. Let's recap the three wagers that you have made before we get to your best bet and my best bet. Uh, you have the Philadelphia Eagles minus four at Seattle, the Minnesota Vikings plus three at the Bengals. And you have the Lions minus four hosting the Broncos. Also, a reminder, everyone, it's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for Week 14. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. All right, Bear, best bet, what do you got? Miami Dolphins. Uh, I, I know we don't know about some of the injuries that they suffered on Monday night, notably Tyree Kill. But I think, again, we're talking about Zach Wilson having career game in awful weather against the Texans team that yeah. lost a bunch of players during that game and it just kind of kind of snowballed late in the in the late late third quarter fourth quarter like I I know that loss was awful Monday night personnel wise scoreboard wise blowing it to touchdown lead as late as they did but if you look at the Miami schedule like this is an absolute have to have game you get Dallas Baltimore Buffalo the rest of the way you just need to come out I trust Mike McDaniel to yeah to, to do enough with Tua and Mostert and some of the other guys and Waddle and some of the other guys that they have on offense to be able to be able to figure out a way to kind of take care of the Jets. I think the Baker loss will kind of be minimalized here on defense because you're dealing with a, a poor Jets offense. So I, I think the Dolphins will come out here. I think they'll win this game. Well, this feels like it could be like a like a 27-7 type of game, I think. Remember, the, the Dolphins are up 14 with four minutes left. Yeah. Like, it wasn't a game where they just stunk at Texas. Correct. It was, it was a, Texas, Correct. I think, had a 0.04% chance right. to win that game. So, the uh, Dolphins, we've seen all year, blown out by <clears> football <throat> teams. Fading Zach Wilson is always a play I think you have to make. My best bet, um, and maybe it's square, buddy, but I'm taking the under in Foxborough here between the Chiefs and Patriots, 37 and a half. Careful, I don't really understand. I, I'm a, I know Patrick Mahomes. I, I get it, man. I'm a Chiefs fan. I've, I've watched every Patrick Mahomes game, but have we watched them lately? They don't score points. They're averaging only 22 and a half points per game. The Patriots are averaging only 13 points a game. Both these defenses are top 10 in DVOA. It's a defensive game. We keep saying to ourselves, Kansas City, they're going to overcome this offense. They're going to find a ways. They don't, haven't done it, Bear. It's week 15 <laughs> in the National Football League. Like, if they haven't done it in week 15, they're not going to do it. So, I think this is a low score. This game is 20 to 10. It falls right around the yep. number, which I know is now down to eight. 2010, 20 to 7. I, I hope I don't even have to sweat for this one. I don't think it's a game where you have to sweat this one out. I don't think so either. And so under 37 and a half is what I have for uh for my for my best bets. And we have, who knows what type of weather we're gonna potentially get in Foxborough on uh, on Sunday as well. But yeah, I can't I can't see the uh the, the Patriots scoring no. a bunch of points. I can't see Kansas City. Remember, before the it. Pittsburgh game, they scored what zero, seven, and six. Yep, correct. Yeah. And then they got help from Steelers offense turned Correct. the ball over, and I, I, I like your play a lot. Thank you. That could be, 
I might find that on my Circa Friday football invitational card. There we go. To, we should. I'm three on three and a half points out. We should. Need to need to make a little run here late. Try and defend my defend. My, I'm, I'm I'm happy with the 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 effort in defending my title there. So I'm, if I can if I can get back into the money, which I think I'm a point out of the money right okay. now. I'm, I'm, I'm but the under 37 and a half might going to depend on the circle line at the yeah. time where they freeze. So yeah, I, I feel I feel. This is scary because I feel really good about those four picks, and I, I feel good about your under as well. So that's yeah. We, we, yeah. In, in, I guess maybe I feel good because they're kind. They kind of feel like picks that are oppo, like public, public picks. Yes. And I think that's kind of why I feel good as well. So it's a spot you want to be in. Uh, you know, exactly. Hopefully, hopefully we'll uh, we'll continue the uh, the good NFL run. Uh, up, up, up seven units, or, 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 or seven games over five hundred, I should say, uh, in, in the in the in the pro column, and ten games under in the college. So we've yeah. made up for the bad college season with the better pro season. Hopefully, we can have a uh, a good college bowl season, a good into the NFL season. Before we get out of here, though, I need to mention it's not too late to play the free Fox Super Six game for Week Fifteen. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars in weekly cash prizes. There, didn't you mention that already? I think I had the wrong. I think I had the wrong day, the wrong schedule, the wrong week. Shh, I won't say anything. Yeah. Well, we got a we, we got a promo twice then. Yeah, two, yeah, two promos. It's okay. You're yeah. good. See, I I told you how important it was to listen during an interview, yeah. and I I didn't even listen. Yeah, I'm terrible at my job. No, just you're just a little I'm bad. Down. I'm down. I'm I'm down. <laughs> I'm down on myself right now. But I uh, know. Yeah, we'll have the uh, we'll have the uh, the column up on FoxSports.com as well to hopefully. Give you a little help when you make your picks. Um, another, another, another one, another one in the books. Uh, appreciate That's everybody. Money, man. Appreciate everybody for uh, listening, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, following on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. The YouTube show is always a, a fun watch as well. So appreciate you for checking us out there. For Jeff, for Sammy P, for Will, I'm Bear. Remember, lost your bet. The more you lose, when you win.